college football has also been having some interesting, uh, mm -hmm. you're seeing a lot of young kids speaking out. Um, I'm interested to know, cause you do a lot of college football coverage. If there's anything that's, if you're, if that surprised you, I mean, I know you said you've talked to a lot of kids that have yeah. told you stuff like this in private, but I mean, seeing these young people come out and have the guts to speak up for themselves uh, against powerhouses that have always kept them from having any sort of power has been really interesting. I'm, I'm interested to know your perspective on that. You know, listen, these kids are playing in some of the most, conservative towns. They are playing in a sport that by and large, I would say it's run by like a white majority that is not very interested in trying to help or engage with the black community. And so in a lot of ways, when they step off the field of play, they feel ostracized. They feel as though the fan cheers for them on Saturdays, but is not cheering or engaged with their experience on any other day of the week or once they graduate don't mean anything so it absolutely is interesting and i've even noted before any of this happened like i felt like college basketball players have always been more empowered by their coaches than college football players the thumb has been on them harder in the same way that you might think an nfl player has the thumb on them more than an nba player who we see always constantly freely speaking their mind and so i think it's been great i think it's been great for clemson players to be like you know what we don't want to do we actually don't want to go to school and walk into a building that has the name of a white slave owner who believed that slavery was a good idea and wanted it to continue. Like, I don't think I want to be on that campus and let's start a petition to end that. And it might start with DeAndre Hopkins and guys that are already in the NFL, but it's, being, it's trickling down to the players and I, and I absolutely love to see it. And it's not the first time they've tried. I mean, we saw it when Missouri football, when, you know, they stood up and they said, listen, we're not going to play this game. Like, we are just going to sit out from it. And we saw the backlash there. I mean, instantly, Missouri's, you know, the senators are reaching out and like, well, we just need to get, take their scholarships and they don't have the right to say this. And you shouldn't use the, the school as your platform and blah, blah, mm. blah. It's like, well, you shouldn't build your school on my back then. Right. Because they're the ones bringing in all the money, the notoriety, the reason why you know, Clemson's attendance is going up is because they're winning national championships because black Deshaun Watson was a superstar transcendent star. You know what I mean? So all of these things are related and to try to parse them apart and say, well, don't use the, the, the logo for this or don't use the school for that or whatever. You're not listening to the individual and coaches are getting it. Like you're, you will lose recruits over this. So you better act right or you better get it together or you better understand or you better have a plan. That's what I think is is going to be cool to see in college football. And I, I really hope that it means we're going to end up with more black head coaches, that they're going to have the same leeway as white head coaches. We're going to see a black athletic director, maybe in the SEC. We don't have one right now, you know, like these are all things that should come from this. If we really believe that the momentum is carried past like this week and every white person feeling bad, then those are the results we're going to start seeing. So I, I hope that actually takes place. I mean, especially with when you mentioned coaches, a lot of them are like the highest paid state employees in the in the states they work in. So it's like, yep. you better know and say, it's like, I saw a lot of people saying like, we can't expect coaches to have something smart to say about this. I'm like, can we not? Yeah. Can we not expect guys who are around young black men all the time to have some sort of understanding about the experience of a young black man? I, it seems... Mm -hmm pretty basic to I, me i think it's fair i think it's actually a part of the job description like it should, it be, should be required no, yeah it should be absolutely but i mean we've seen a bunch of we've seen a lot of coaches make statements i'm wondering and you don't have to have an answer to this uh if there was anybody any coach's statement that like made you be like hmm okay like you were actually surprised by in a good what, way the thing that i've enjoyed and i'll use georgia just because like obviously i'm in georgia but like the defensive coordinator dan lanning he they created a video the guys created a video and he was the last one to speak on that video and he actually addresses the fans like hey fans if you are supporting these guys you know during the regular seasons da, 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 then you should be the ones like protesting and standing by them now and i think that that's a it's good to see the players doing something but it's even better to see their white coach hop on, be a part of the edit, be a, a strong voice. And like, I want you to say the black community and I want you to say, you know, it's not about like we we stand for all Togetherness. You know, inclusive. Yeah, I don't, that's not what this is about. Like, right. obviously, yes, we all stand for that, great. But right now it's about the black community. It's about the black player that you took from probably a marginalized community in some cases and thought you could just drop him in the middle of a university and everything was going to be okay. Like starting to recognize that that experience means something. And I think coaches are starting to do that. And they're probably having to have conversations with parents and players. And I just think it's going to be so interesting. So whenever I see a coach 
not only putting out a statement, but you can see they're like involved in like helping the kid figure out what their voice is or helping the kid feel like they support them. That means even more to me. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.